Hey folks, how's it going? Not gonna lie, I halfway forgotten today was Jonathan Fight Day, but honestly, it's the Earth one and I would rather be doing literally anything else, because Earth has been my worst element for a pretty dang long time at this point, and not even on a grid side. Like, grid, sure, it's Magna, but grid, it's fine. Problem are the characters. I'm missing so many units, it's not even funny. Not to mention uh, ranting, which is another big reason why I didn't even want to make this in the first place. Cause like, no ranting, no Yatima, no Raziel, no Olivia, no Sabrina. Olya I did manage to get. That's a very small win. She and Baizu are probably going to have to carry the entire guild war. But I'm afraid if that's going to be Baizu's role, my fat ass is just going to split his spine in two. So when it comes to trying to set something up, this is going to be one hell of a painful journey. But considering that the Northern fight has already started, I can't really postpone this anymore. So let's go to a quick overview of the units I may use this Northern fight, even though this is going to be such a terrible train wreck. Althea got rebalanced, massive damage to FO and cooldown for Order and Discord. Order with this spell, Discord with plain damage and he also has in self CA standby. Uh, EMP's Awakening is at level 8. No earring though. Arlumea I still sometimes see use. Shield and Veil plus delay and some extra effects from here with some nice damage cap. Charge guard boost, device duration down and some damage reduction. We might see her for some charge attack comps for the like Nightmare 200, 250, I'm just going to list her here for now. Meleo, keen refresh but just for herself. Uh, bonus or damage to spear and axe specialty earth allies triple attacks. Extra passive echo might be nice for maybe an OTK, but she herself isn't really going to do much outside of using two buttons. Rio, she's at 110. I think she needs to be 130 to actually be able to do something. Because yeah, 3 star fragments, these are just from reducing weapons. I should be able to do so fairly easily. I uh, got my 10 axes right here. I'd want to try and bring Trio up to 130, luckily during the interlude. Uh, Octo 150, best part is that it's going to be buffing a lot of these spell cancels against the United Fight bosses. This is usually pretty good. Awakening at 9, EMPs look fine. Ethereal Mastery might want to replace. A Earth Attack should be fine. I think second one might be Stamina, because it doesn't deal enough multi hits to justify the supplemented damage. Chicken. Chicken still brings Echo, Chicken still brings Defense down, Chicken still brings Multi Attack Rate and Attack buffs over here. But uh, yeah, she's a little bit destitute at this point, but the buffs might still be nice. Razia. She's got a 5 star. It's been pretty neat, but she's another charge attack focused unit. Again, if you need to cope on a charge attack focused setup, if you need to cope with Octo 150 rather than bursting, she might actually make it into the team. So we move on to Yggdrasil. She's a primal, she brings some healing, might be alright for longer full autos. Like, uh, she has about the same chances to appear in a full auto comp as Arlume at this point. So we come to Alexiel, who has just gotten a 5 star. This ring, right here, has been here since 2018. <laughs> uh, earth damage, damage immunity to all allies for 1 turn, sharp boost to debuff resistance, and dispel cancel for 5 turns. Might be alright. Might have made her a little bit better for off element fights, but doesn't actually look all that great. She might actually take around 13 turns in order to get the 4th skill up. Unless you run with more charge bar boost with it in a team with Octo. Because, yeah, sure, she's gotten a little bit better than her 4 star version, but at the same time, I'm not that big a fan. Uh, Kame, level 100, but no extra skill. Might want to pick the extra skill up though. For him, I really want to try both a Kame and Kameless setup, see how big is the difference between a Kame Magna Tree or a Kameless Magna Tree. Sorry is my dear clicker friend. That's the first character we see with a new concharge attack, the first character we see that might be decent for an OTK. 
Dante, you should have some nice auto attacks. Might be alright for some auto damage, might want to try him for an auto focused OTK. But mostly just OTK. Uh, when it comes to burst, I'm pretty sure there's going to be better options. Magisa, the Christmas version, maybe long term content. Uh, new image is going to be useless. She has a nice armor, 3 turns out of 7, and she should spam Holy Night Ray, so she should spam these spells. Then we come to the first assassin, the other unit that might save my unit and fight. Too bad she's old. She's really, really old, and she probably needs a little bit of a rebalance too. The yeah, sort assassin, nowhere near the grand version. Uh, I think Sidala kind of stole her spot as an assassin, but Sidala assassins on turn 2. Crit skill cap, hostility, that's fine. The yeah, cap plus healing, it's alright. 8 supplemented is fine. Pengi. Pengi is on a completely different field. Triple attack plus new con normal attack. We're going to have to see how big this damage is, but she should be alright. She already has the multi attack awakening. No CA cap, she's not going to deal charge attack damage. Okay, get your crit, skill cap, supplemented damage. She's fine. Mirel and reset, double crest for an assassin, and I'm pretty sure this is a low status assassin as well. Uh, they do have guaranteed triple attack at least. Okay, she needs another wasteland crest unit in her team, which I think might be MC on a mana diver setup. Uh, in order to get the assassin and double strike. Let's see, let's give them a shot, why not? Yorito, I don't think we can even use her. Uh, you need five fists for her. Well, that's two. Uh, yeah, we have an ultima fist as the number three. Uh, these are for CA specs. Uh, maybe might go to four with covenant ruined fist. But she's not getting a fifth one unless we can go with the double pillar driver. But this one is 3 bars, 3 bars I currently don't have and can't really afford farming. Let's move on to Lenna. Damage supplemented, heal, clear, drain, damage reduction. Uh, again, maybe we might see her as a healer later down the line in some of the longer fights. Summer Ill Knot, 40% boost to Earth Allies charge bars. Might be trying this one for some OTK, but it's going to be a charge attack based OTK. I don't know how much I like that. Uh, as well as supplement damage. Uh, maybe for the Nightman 95s might not be that bad. Again, depends on how much you need to cope with the rest of your units. So we move on to Kokoro. Uh, guaranteed to attack and 3 hit split on normal attack. This one we will need to run with a crap turn of supplemented damage. That's how she works the best. Uh, skill cap of course, dodge rate of course, supplemented damage of course, even though supplemented damage is a little bit low. Got 11 cages, absolutely no regrets spending one on her. There we go. Okay, moving on, we have Setia, mostly just a healer for charge attack cops. Uh, heal debuff duration down, dispel CA focus. She's a character I had to sub ticks, honestly, but she's also been one of the best characters in the entire element so far. Next up, Sidala. Uh, she brings some real nice debuffs, she brings Dispel, she brings Assassin, but Assassin is on turn 2. If I need to do 2 turn clears, that's going to be likely for the Nutman 95s, 100s, maybe 150s. Not sure if I'll be using them on the 200 and 250s, but for the early parts of the Guild War, outside of the OTK, they're likely going to have a slot in my team. I do want to get the extra triple attack from here though. Then supplemented damage is fine, CA cap is also fine. Okay, 18 out of 22 for the extra triple attack rate. Anthuria. She brings Echo, she brings Veil, she brings damage reduction, as well as a double strike for 4 turns for herself at MC. Uh, she might be alright, especially for the longer fights. Uh, 1 turn cut on normal attacks. Oh, we are absolutely getting this one. Uh, then we have Gallion, yet another unit who needs to stand still for one turn before getting an assassin. Uh, boost to attack and echo, but needs to be targeted. Awakening level 9. Uh, EMP, stats, crit, stamina, CA, some defense, some HP, it's fine. 30% skill cap, supplemented damage plus 8. Plus 8 supplemented damage is a little bit low, but then again, we're going to leave this here. Moving on, Vicky, Summer Vicky. Like, she might be alright, but I might want to try her out for the 
OTK as well. If it's a one button OTK, it gives double strike to all other team members. Maybe, hopefully, we can get it done with just that one hit, that one double strike, alongside other units who just triple attack. Defense charge bar healing, that's fine. Debuff success healing, that's fine. Supplemented damage plus five. This is a little bit low, but then again, it's the key, it's mostly a support. I'm not really going to touch that one. Might still be fine for long term content as well, mostly because the Rodent Rally activates the double strike on Charge Attack as well, and she brings a crap ton of healing too. Then we move on to Folia, the one character who is likely going to have to carry my entire guild dwarf. Awakening level 9, EMPs look fine, skill cap doesn't really matter, counter on damage might want to reroll. And we are almost at the end. Collab character we don't really care about. Next is going to be Uriel. Yeah, he's likely going to be the number two unit carrying me. And still isn't done. Hold on. <laughs> okay, crit. See a damage I don't think we care too much about. Maybe one point and one point. Uh, see a cap. We might want skill cap instead. And he's one of those units I do want to use these right off the bat. Again, if you need any more proof that Earth hates me, look no further than this. Then we move on to Shushuku, but she's a charge attack based enmity unit. And the only reason she even gets into a backline is going to be the 10% skill boost to Magna. Last unit in the list is Kolulu. Uh, maybe if we want to run Reset and Mirai, we might want to run this one too. Okay, so. This is the list. Honestly, pretty short, and the amount of characters we can potentially use for OTK are very few and far in between. Uh, Folia with the Assassin, she has to stay in here. It's likely going to be Folia, Pengi, Dante. Very likely I'm going to be uh, running Dante. Same thing goes for Koku. Amphuria and Vikala, I'm not too sure. Uh, Uriel, I'm pretty sure he's still going to be there. What are we going to do for MC? Because if we want to try giving double strike uh, from MC directly, we need to be using the Dark Opus Harp. Uh, maybe try something with just Split in Spirit plus CA or Triple Zero plus CA. Yeah, Rising Force with Pinch Harmonics. Otherwise, we're back to Vision or Lumberjack usual mana diver as i do have the dagger over here i uh, could use the alexial dagger mirror blade shard alternatively uh, sumabito which gets the passive for the normal attack amplified and i can run him with just tag team either tag team or folia assassin plus tag team not a fan of having to go two clicks but we're going to have to check the damage see how high the damage is i don't want to do summon plus click uh, summon plus click is way too much. But if it's two buttons, I don't think I get that much either. This extra echo. And with the extra echo, they kill. Ah, uh, two buttons though. One button is 4 million from MC, which didn't even proc the... Didn't even proc the Manatura. 4.9 from Folia. 7.3 from Dante. 7.1 from Pengi. The Cocos damage is in the 6 plus 1 millions range. And Uriel is down to 4.9. They're not killing with tech team, this needs to be refreshed. Yeah, technically two buttons, but they need to go through two attack animations, so this is an absolute no-go. As Chrysar wants a charge attack too. Uh, same does Rising Force. Okay, again, this is going to be yet another attempt at a one button on Magna 3. Yeah! 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 
uh, one charge attack plus double strike shouldn't be all that bad. Seven, four. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God they clear. 35 million. <laughs> Very close, too. Okay, so uh, we will say Mammoth plus And now for turn two, that's where we go with Babs and Nukes. Heavenly Dance we don't need. Forty millions. It's about this amount of damage, and we likely need something to buff triple attack to MC as well. Not to mention, she does 11 millions here. Uh, curious to see Uriel and Tigers dealing about this amount of damage, 51 to 55 millions. I guess I might cook something up during the interlude for the Nacti Fives, otherwise I'm just not going to worry, see what comes out and just cope my way through the Nightman Nacti Fives. Again, this Jotun fight is going to be absolute hell. I am not looking forward to any of the other fights. So, I guess that's going to be it for me from the time being. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully, you had a little bit of fun laughing at the sheer amount of cope going on in my grids. And see you guys around soon. Ciao!